I came across a collection and I was rejected for my first offer that I put in, but I didn't give up. I ended up keeping in contact with the seller and provided more offers until I was able to get a second meeting, find out what I was able to get from the collection and stay tuned. Welcome guys to another episode of Comics with Bonix. I'm Steven and if you guys haven't come across my channel before, please hit the subscribe button so you guys can catch future videos that I release. And if you guys enjoy the content, please hit the like button so it shows support for the channel and I continue dropping videos for you guys. So I came across um, this seller quite a while ago and I've made multiple purchases from them. And at this point, um, we have been um, in contact with each other quite a bit. And um, he mentioned to me that he wanted to let go a big chunk of his collection. So um, we set up an appointment and I went over his house and this is the um, lot that he brought out. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys uh, a clip of what was brought out. And at the after this clip, I'll go ahead and provide you guys what I was offering for this uh, collection. So stay tuned. So as you guys can see from that clip, it was quite a big lot of keys. We had everything from Silver Age, Amazing Spider-Man. We had uh, Silver Age X-Men. And we even had some big books like Hulk 181 and Amazing Spider-Man 129. We even had a couple of Golden Age books as well. So after a lot of uh, discussion, we even talked about movies. Um, we even talked about um, runs that we are trying to fill. Also storylines from, uh, from series that we've read. And so what ended up happening was I put in an offer of $6,600 for that lot that you guys saw. And when I provided that offer, I think the, his first reaction was, wow, I was expecting a lot more. I think he was expecting more in the range of $12,000. So we were kind of far apart on that initial offer. So I mentioned to him, 
a lot of these books I'm not looking to keep in my collection. Uh, a lot of them I'm going to be planning to uh, sell either at uh, local shows and I needed to make sure that um, without looking at them individually because we did, really didn't have enough time to look at them individually. I wanted to make sure there was enough um, margin for me to be able to uh, make my money back and a little bit more um, for the work that I put in just because um, I'm at that point in my collecting where I feel like I'm a part dealer and part collector. Some of them I'd probably keep but the majority of them probably like 90% of them I'd probably uh, go ahead and sell. So uh, ultimately he pretty much said that he'd like to decline my offer. Uh, he was not ready to let a majority of them go for that price. So um, I understood. I let him know that we'd keep in contact and um, I left his house. So a month goes by and then I kept thinking about that collection. So what I did was I messaged him back about a month later and um, I messaged him, let him know that I was interested in the raw books, mostly the raw books, not um, not any of the bigger slabs, but some of most of the raw books. And I'd be willing for him to take out some of the books that he wanted to keep for himself and um, just provide the books that he's willing to sell. So I went ahead and got a lot of books, um, ended up more than I thought I would get. And let's go ahead and show you guys what I got and then uh, let you guys know what I ended up picking these up for. And you guys can let me know if it was a great deal or not. So let's go ahead and go through each of the books. And so we'll go ahead and keep, show you guys the keys towards the end. So the first one is X Factor 24. This is the first appearance of Archangel. Pretty cool book there. These newer um, 80s and 90s are probably like a VF plus to a near mint minus. This is probably closer to a VF plus. And we have X factor number six, first appearance of apocalypse, first full appearance of apocalypse. Awesome to see that in there as well. And then here is Marvel Comics Presents number 72, first appearance of What the Next. A lot of these will be for sale. Um, I'm planning to have a uh, local show pretty soon. So it'll be available at the local show. So this one is Wolverine number 10. Classic fight between Sabretooth and Wolverine. So this next one is one that I've never had in the collection before and I've always seen it. It's very high demand, but I've never had one in the collection. This is a Wolverine number eight and classic uh, Hulk and Wolverine cover. And if you guys have noticed so far, all of the raw books were in these BCW, um, BCW holders. It's kind of like... Um, sleeves that you can put in a binder so he would have all his raw books organized by series and also by number and they were all organized in binders so he had bookshelves of binders all in a comic book room it was i wish i could take some of that footage but he preferred not to have any of his collection on camera but they were all in binders like this with backing boards and the bcw so i didn't rebag and board them yet i will i just wanted to show you guys just so you guys can get an idea of what the collection um, came out and looked like so that's a pretty cool one wolverine number eight so let's go ahead and take these down so this next one's pretty cool this is one of the first books that i wanted as a kid this is the first appearance of cable in new mutants 87 and this is a beautiful copy. It's very, very bright colors as well as um, high grade. So pretty nice book there. And you have to have this book along with New Mutants 87. This is New Mutants 98. And this one is also signed 
by Rob Liefeld right there. So pretty awesome book, pretty high grade as well. Um, this one is not gonna be sent in to be graded. This one will probably be on sale just as is. And if you guys are interested in some of these books, I'm gonna go ahead and provide you guys with the information of my next show, which is Near Mint Sundays. That's gonna be in Anaheim, California at the Brookhurst Community Center. I'll put the information of the show as well as the address and time and date in the description area below. It's gonna be November 5th, 2023. And I'll have all of these books that I'm gonna have for sale at really, really good prices. So be sure to mark your calendar so you guys can check these books out. And the collectors that are going to be showing up the show will have first dibs at this new collection. So I hope to see you guys there. So the next book we have is we're starting to get to the Silver Age now. And the first one is one of my favorite series. It is X-Men, Silver Age X-Men, the first appearance of Eunice the Untouchable. And this is X-Men number eight. This one is, I would say, at least a 3.5 to a 4.0. Very, very nice white cover. Um, this, it probably will look a lot better once I have these in Mylar, but very, very nice book. I was super glad to have this, um, to see this in the collection and just one of the awesome Silver Age X-Men keys. And the next one, I absolutely was ecstatic to find this one. This one is the first appearance of Blob. This one is probably a lower grade, a 2.5 to a 3.0. I have to look at it very closely. But this one, I am still undecided whether this is going to be for sale. I'm thinking of keeping this one for now. So this one might stay in the PC. So that's a really, really nice one. Very nice colors as well. And this next one is X-Men number two. And I believe this one I'm gonna be keeping as well, but this one is a pretty low grade copy. The spine is pretty beat up. There's a few pieces missing and I'm pretty sure there's a, um, yeah, there's a few pieces missing from the spine. So you can kind of see right here. So it's a really rough spine. So this one is probably the same grade, like a two five. So, but very, very cool to have that. All right, so let's go ahead and put those down. All right, so we are about less than halfway. We still have a bunch of books and the rest are Silver Age, Amazing Spider-Man. And if you guys are enjoying the content, please show your support by hitting the like button. And a big portion of you guys that are watching are not subscribed to my channel. About 70% of you are not subscribed. So please, I'm pretty close to hitting 2000. So if you guys wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel and you guys can check out a lot more free content. So let's go ahead and get into the Silver Age Amazing Spider-Man. I'm super excited for this lot. There's a lot of nice uh, filler books and keys in here. So let's start with number 54, Classic Doc Ock Cover by John Romita Sr. Awesome book there. Most of these are gonna be in the range of about 4.0 or higher. This one is a, probably a mid-grade copy, number 53. Another Doc Ock classic cover. These will all be for sale. And this is number 52. I think this is the third appearance of Kingpin, I believe. So number 52. And here's an awesome book. First cover appearance of Kingpin, number 51. Uh, love this black cover. Um, this is very affordable now. So um, yeah, pretty awesome high demand book at a pretty good price. All right, so let's put those down. So we're starting to get into some of the big guys now. So the first big key was the first appearance of the rhino and this is an absolutely gorgeous cover and gorgeous condition too so you got a awesome date stamp right here and it says july 7th 1966 pretty awesome spot to have a date stamp and 
the condition of this, I want to say this is closer to like a 6.0. I, I have to check in person. Whenever I sell these books at my shows, I usually have an estimate of what these grades are. So if you guys are interested, you guys will always know what my estimate of the grades are. Um, and I try to be pretty conservative. So that's a pretty good one. Love that cover. And the next one is um, an awesome Steve Ditko. We're getting to the low numbers now. We're number 29, second appearance of Scorpion. Always love this water cover. And I'm going to be so happy to enjoy these up until the show. To be able to look through these will just be such a treat. And most of these are in awesome condition. We have now number 27, Green Goblin cover. Love the, the vibrant colors on that one. And this one is the first appearance of Crime Master. This one's a little bit lower of a grade. This one is number 26. So as you guys can see, we are getting a huge nice silver age amazing spider-man lot this is number 25 and if you guys are keeping track let me guys let me know what you guys think i paid for this collection go ahead and put in the comments what you guys think i paid for this collection we have some bigger books coming so it'd be cool to find out what you guys think i paid for this collection after the last book i'll let you guys know what i paid so this is a key. I think this is the second appearance of Mary Jane. I want to say maybe second or first full. can't remember. And this is number 24. Okay. Try to speed up here. I know this video is getting kind of long. Number 23. I think this is the third appearance of Green Goblin. Pretty cool. Pumpkin bomb getting thrown at Spider-Man there. Pretty awesome. So let's put these down. And we have now number 23, sorry, 22, number 22. So almost a full run, just missing a few. So here are some big ones here. First appearance of Scorpion, pretty awesome condition too. I would say at least a 4.0. This is probably the highest condition I've had in this book. I've always had low copies, low grade copies. Number 19, this one's pretty high, it's about a 5.5-ish. Five, five so most of the big ones that I'm showing, about to show you, I've flipped through the pages to make sure they're all complete. There's a nice one there, number 13, first Mysterio. This one is a bit faded. Um, I would say this is about a 2.0 though. And here's a nice one that's not faded. Number 10, first Enforcers. This is a nice grade too. I think I might keep this one. This is a 5.5. Five. So not sure, we'll see if this one's for sale. But a majority, probably 90% of these will be for sale. First, Electro. Um, this one is about a 2.0, it's also faded. And this one is just such a huge key though. Um, to be able to have this um, raw, um, very, very tough to find nowadays raw. So most of them are graded. Uh, and Speaking of ones that are very tough to find raw, this is another one. The Lizard, First Lizard, Amazing Spider-Man number six. Overall, you can still um, see most of the colors there. Still is a nice looking copy. I'd say about 3.0 to 3.5. All right, so let's put this down. I'm still going. We still have about uh, five books left. So these are some big ones we have. Amazing Spider-Man number five, the first crossover of Doctor Doom. So this one is about a 3.5 to a 4.0, but even though it's faded, I would still give it about a 3.5 to a 4.0 because it's still in really good shape. There's not a ton. There's a little bit of chipping, but not a bad copy by any means. Raw Amazing Spider-Man, first five issues of Amazing Spider-Man. So that's pretty awesome. And here is the biggest raw key of the collection. And it's in pretty good grade too. It's the first appearance of Kingpin, Amazing Spider-Man number 50 with this blazing red cover. 
Um, not too many spine ticks, not too many big color brick increases. It can definitely uh, benefit from a press. And this one is about mid grade all day. Definitely a mid grade all day. Uh, beautiful copy and I would just love to be able to flip through this one and read the panels and um, enjoy this one raw. This one's gonna be for sale so um, this one is gonna be on the wall if you guys come out to Near Mint Sundays. So the last three books I have are graded and they are were included in this lot. So let's go ahead and go over the first one. The first one is um, Pretty cool book that I've never had before in my collection either. It's Star Wars number 42, first appearance of Boba Fett in the comics. And this one is an 8.5, so very, very nice copy. And this one, um, not too expensive now. It's less than $200, I believe, but I haven't checked the prices exactly, but I know it's, it's less than $200, which this one used to be like a four $400 book back in 2021 so definitely taking a hit but still a great book to have in a collection so that one's there and the next one is a pretty big key too it's captain america number 117 first appearance of falcon in 5-0 and this one is a pretty nice copy i think most of the most of the damage is from just color breaking creases, nothing too major, but it presents, in my opinion, nicer than a 5.0. And now we have the last book. This one I was planning to add to my collection, so I'm super happy that he included this one in the lot. This is, and this is in a very nice condition too, it is Marvel Spotlight number five, and this is a first appearance of the Ghost Rider and this one is in a 7.5 with off-white pages and it is in an older generation uh, slab but this one presents super nice it's pretty tough to find these in high grade so once you get into the 8 and 9.0 range they get pretty expensive so this was a very nice pickup I was super happy to add this um, I have almost this was one bronze age key that was missing so this one i definitely was happy to to add to my collection i'm not going to be selling this one this is going to stay for a while but this one is an awesome pickup so as you guys can see it was a pretty big haul about 35 or so comics total three graded and about 32 raw books and the total i paid for this whole comic haul was four thousand dollars and i think overall that was a pretty good price to be able to get all of these books i think that first ghost rider already is at least a 16 to 17 hundred dollar book so with all the amazing spider-man all the St steve ditko amazing spider-man number five number six number nine number 13 all of those keys included and a nice looking copy of first kingpin I was able to get the whole entire uh, lot for four thousand dollars so let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the haul let me know if you guys think i got a pretty good deal there was a lot of books as you guys can see in the original clip that i wasn't able to pick up like the hulk 181 and the amazing spider-man 129 werewolf by night 32 those ones he ended up keeping um which very understandable um, I think I'm going to continue to follow up with him because I think the moral of the story is even though he rejected my first offer, I was persistent. I kept contacting him and letting him know like I'm still interested, provided him uh, more feedback on what on how we think we can meet somewhere in the middle. And I think we did that, which um, even though I spent a lot of time that first visit, I think that was important for us to kind of get an idea and research what he had in his collection because he really doesn't know prices he doesn't look up any of his prices and he he's not really involved in the comic book market so i was able to be very transparent and shared a lot of my kind of feedback and knowledge of what i thought the books were worth so um i think the moral of the story is be persistent and be as transparent as possible and we knew what where both 
of us stood we were on the same page and i think it was a fair deal for both but let me know what you guys think if you guys can hit the like button on the way out and with that guys i want to thank you for joining me here on comics with monix and as always i want to remind you to collect your passion we'll see you guys in the next video take care